Johnny here for Johnny's Car Care and Reviews. So tonight I'm hitting you up with some info, some cool photos on the Maverick interior space. I wanna answer those questions even before I get to eating my supper. It's getting pretty late, but I wanna bring this to you straight up. The interior of the Maverick. So many questions, so much trouble. People, you know, the main questions have been about the touchscreen and about the interior space. Well, here you have it, you've got you know, the guy beside me is 6'1", 250 pounds. He's a big chunk of beef and he fits right in. He's got all sorts of headroom. He has even some knee room, leg room left over. Headroom, tons. Leg room, he's got a little to spare. I have a ton of leg room left over. I've got a ton of head space and I'm, you know, 5'10". So yeah, I've got a ton of headspace left over. So one of the main questions I've been getting is, you know, can you can you get four beefy guys into the Maverick? And well, I'm pretty wide. I'm wide enough in the shoulders. And my, my friend beside me, he's pretty wide in the shoulders at, you know, 250 pounds, 6'1". And we have almost 10 inches between our shoulders. So lots of space in the Maverick. There's, you know, a good, a good good eight ten inches between the two of us so we felt like it was very rumor roomy in the back seat now we sat in the front that's a no-brainer tons of space in the front no issue issues whatsoever tons of leg room you know we've had people be you know on YouTube that are six five six six in the front seat and just fine so I don't need to include all sorts of photos for that but I can tell you I did play around with probably the second most asked question about the Maverick is about the touchscreen. So you need to have it wired. First of all, XL, XLT, and Lariat, that's the Lariat without the luxury package or first edition package, which requires luxury package, all your standard trims, all your trims really. XL, XLT, Lariat, you're, going, you're not gonna have Sync 3. You only get Sync 3 with Lariat, luxury, and if you add first edition, of course, you still have, uh, you have Sync 3. So what does this really mean? Well, first of all, throughout all the systems, where, whether you have the Sync 3 with Lariat luxury package or not, or XL or XLT, you're gonna have to wire your phone to the vehicle to have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. So keep that in mind. You're gonna need to have your wire, your cell phone wire, and if you want the apps going from your phone, to your Maverick, you're gonna need to wire that. It's only Sync 4 that now has the capacity to you know, exchange uh, via air. Enough data exchange can occur only with Sync 4. So Sync 3, you don't have enough you know, capacity to transfer over the air data for your applications. Now do keep in mind, when you have Sync 3 with the luxury Lariat package, you can then press the talk button on the vehicle. And if you've driven various Fords before, they probably had Sync 3 and you're used to giving vocal commands for you know changing the temperature, changing the radio station. You can't do that without Sync 3. So Lariat luxury package, you can give orders, boss your vehicle around, and it'll change things like the temperature, the radio station and whatnot. Now with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you're gonna have, let's say with Android Auto, you'll have a Google Assistant that you'll get to talk with, but you can't change things like the radio station. What you can do is you can access things that your phone can do, like make a phone call, make dial a number, pick out a contact, and once again, you will have to be wired. So for all models of Maverick, you do have to be wired to have, let's say, Google Maps, go and pop up on the screen. Now it does work very well. Uh, I love Google Maps. It even tells you, you know, the speed limit for the zone. So very, very useful thing to have. Normally, you know, when the manufacturer is providing um, the infotainment system and you pick one out, that will allow you to have, you know, speed sign recognition. Normally you're way into the top level trims, paying a ton of money. And here's the joke. The Maverick is not a ton of money. 
you can buy a Maverick for less than a Honda Civic and get better fuel economy. So an XL Hybrid is cheaper than a Civic and will get you better fuel economy. But speaking of fuel economy, here's a little talking point and let's bring some Bronco talk into this. I wish that, you know, local governments and, you know, all governments everywhere are talking about worldwide. They're talking all about, you know, doing what's best for the environment and making responsible decisions. Well, how is it that when I drive, I've got two options to drive home in my Bronco. And remember, governments do like to control what we drive and are trying to really focus, in it, focus into vehicles that are better for the environment. So less power, less noise and whatnot is the result. I can drive around a city to get to my home and that takes 23 to 25 kilometers depending on the route I take or I can drive right through the city for 11 kilometers half the distance less than half the distance however local governments and you know all governments should be thinking about this little things that can make a huge difference I can't go through the city it's ridiculous every light is programmed that if I go the speed limit I will hit every single light and that's running down the main strip in the city the main strip which should be the priority it receives all the traffic it, the lights are going red so that cars that aren't on the side roads can get on the main road first of all there should be sensors and cameras on these light on these light posts so that the lights don't go red unless there's actual traffic needing to get onto the main strip. The main strip should be green all the time unless there is a need for the light to go red. Secondly, if you are gonna put timers on these things, have some sort of intelligence to it. My goodness, I'm red. I stomp on the pedal. I go faster than the speed limit and I still can't get to the next light before it turns red on me. I'd actually have to go way over the speed limit and I'm not willing to do that in town. It's not safe, you know? eight, nine kilometers over the speed limit, I can live with on the main strip. There's no houses, it's all businesses. And at night to get home. But it's ridiculous that I hit, I hit almost every single red. So people gotta, you know, not just talk the talk, you gotta walk the walk and it's pretty annoying. You know, a little talking piece that governments will always talk the environmental talk and not even make small changes like working on having smarter traffic lights, less traffic, less tickets, no, less people running red lights because they're just you know frustrated or whatnot. It doesn't make any sense. Do what's good for the environment, do what's better for people. My Bronco, you know, if I could do half the mileage, I'd love to, I wanna keep that odometer low, but more importantly, in city, a Bronco in the city gets about, let's say 25% less, it, the fuel economy isn't as good by about 25% but I'm running half the distance, so I'm still getting at least a 25% advantage. Better for the environment, better for my Bronco, better for everyone. So hopefully, if anyone's a city planner listening to this or you know works, on the city, works for the city, maybe someone can propose this in their area. I know I wanna propose this in my area. I hope I've been really helpful with uh, the Maverick info, trying to get you info that you hadn't gotten your hands on quite possibly yet. Um, keep in mind for your Maverick when you're ordering it up or even if you already have ordered, very important, get a signed offer. Your dealership should be able to print you off an offer that will say, you know, that it's a Maverick or a Bronco, what trim it is, what price it is, and then sign away. And that price should be MSRP or maybe, you know, paperwork fee of a couple hundred dollars, whatever. But none of this crazy $3,000 US more for a Maverick or thirty or forty thousand dollars U.S. more for a Bronco. That's got to stop. That's not good for anyone. That is just you know a way for dealerships, certain dealerships, to be encouraging the demise of their existence. They're just you know marching straight into uh, their demise and the end of the dealership system. And those do create jobs. So, and it can hopefully be a way to get you know far better service and a way to really get informed but if you're in an area where you're not informed hopefully my channel has been helping because hey that's what i want to do here now speaking of helping i will try to get more interior reviews a real full thorough review on the interior of the maverick this is really just a preview and i'm hoping to make it out to a farm this weekend to catch a little air 
uh, with the Bronco. So stay tuned. I'm also coming out with, if I can find the time somehow, with finally after a month of having this footage sit sitting in on my camera, the footage for the plugin escape. So I really want to get that review up to you. But first, I really feel like I got to do the channel justice and really properly cover the interior of the Maverick. Also coming up, I'll focus in on just the two liter EcoBoost all wheel drive test drive. And do keep in mind, the EcoBoost, if you're, if you're th shopping a Maverick, here's my piece of advice. If you're doing 80% highway driving or more, the Maverick two liter EcoBoost is great on the highway. If you're doing, you know, less, if you're doing, you know, 60, 70% in the city, well, it's a no brainer, get a hybrid. So try to calculate what your drive's gonna be. If you're doing a whole lot of highway, you might wanna get the EcoBoost to get it sooner. And if you're doing, you know, more than 30% in town, well, then it makes a heck of a lot of sense to get that hybrid because right now, few vehicles, no truck is getting anywhere near that kind of fuel economy in the city. You know, we're talking about five to six liters per hundred kilometers. So, you know, you're going to be playing around the 38 to 50 mile per gallon uh, fuel consumption in town and gas just went up yet again. So stay tuned. Please like and subscribe to help the channel out and not miss out on any of the fun stuff we'll uh, hopefully be doing together. Please Put in the comments section any other questions you might have that you want me to cover on the Maverick uh, because I really do want to help out. And until next time, I wish you all more cars and more power. And I do hope you get to put the pedal to the metal this week.